this was written on Easter Sunday, which is interesting. Um, <laughs> and now here we are on the day after the rapture. So, <laughs> um, so, so the prompt for this was, she listened for breath. And uh, I left off on the cliffhanger. She was about to find out. So when you hear that, that's when the next part starts. She listened for breath. It was all she could do to center herself, standing on the edge of her own history. She heard nothing on the other side of the door, but she could hear her best girl, Rosie, beside her. She always brought Rosie along with her on these nights, those nights when they knew that if they survived, they would never forget. She was trying not to ju judge herself too harshly. You never know when you might end up in this situation, she told herself. You never know when you might end up trying to disguise yourself as a nun or, or a stripper or, or both. Uh, <laughs> see, she just found out that her mother was a nun, and if you do the math, you'll know that she was the guilty kind of nun. The, <laughs> the kind who tried to cover up her sin of lust by giving into gluttony and hoping she could gain enough weight to hide the fact that she was pregnant. It was working pretty well, apparently, until the nun's daughter dropped out onto the convent floor and she was kicked out. And that was all the nun's daughter knew, and it was driving her mad. It was this that would bring her here to this one of those adventures you would only find yourself on in the search for something of your past for this footsteps that once shaped your own. She stood now on the doorstep of that convent where she apparently took her first living breaths. She knocked firmly on the heavy wooden door and stepped back to let Rosie do the talking. The door opened. Rosie said something about how they were traveling nuns in need of a short rest, and the nun ushered them inside. And beneath the dim red lights, a half circle of nuns stood squinting at them. Now she heard her own breath, heavy beneath the hot habit she'd stitched out of sheets. Which convent did you say you were from? One of the nuns said. They didn't believe for a second that the two were nuns. Which was why they were prepared with part two of the plan. Pretend to be wayward strippers who thought they were on their way to a lesbian bachelor party. We're <laughs> <laughs> from the order of the naughty girls, Rosie said. And we heard there were some naughty ladies in the house tonight. And what looked like a much practiced swoop, Rosie removed her makeshift habit to reveal a 1920s gangster stripper getup. The nun's daughter hadn't needed her to commit quite so much to the role, of course, but it might just be the perfect pitch to get the nuns to take Rosie aside and try to convert her, an impossible task, as the nun's daughter snooped around in search of evidence of her mother. It seemed to be working. The nuns turned their half-circle away from the young woman, chattering among themselves like nervous penguins. The nun's daughter looked around as she waited, smelling the walls, wondering if her mother's scent remained anywhere in the wood. The nuns turned back, and the smallest one stepped forward with a sly grin. Now she looked like a penguin with a secret to reveal. <laughs> Rosie and the nun's daughter jumped when the nuns began whooping like teenagers. You ladies caught us on our casual Friday night, she said. We want to see a show. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of convent was this, the nun's daughter wondered to herself. The nuns gathered around. She was about to find out. Rosie was brave, taking on her job of distracting the nuns by stepping forward into the center of the circle. As far as the nun's daughter knew, Rosie had never stripped in her life. In fact, the only time she'd ever seen Rosie dance was during their scheme to get free gym memberships by posing as fitness dance instructors. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie left the gym that day with a broken ankle. Luckily, none of the dance students had bothered to follow any of her moves, so hers was the only injury. The nun's daughter watched Rosie's pale cheeks redden as she scooted into the circle. Rosie coughed, giggled a little, and put her hands on her scrawny hips. She looked more like she was beginning a cheerleading routine than an erotic dance. The <laughs> nun's daughter could see any hope of finding her history falling away sh faster than her gym membership. She sighed, sure they were going to have to give up this mission. The nuns, however, were determined to get a show. They stood <laughs> waiting with faithful patience until one stepped back to tap at a dark CD player in the corner of the room. Need a little music, dear? The woman asked. Well, what are you girls stripping to these days? <laughs> <laughs> then she rejoined the circle, leaving the CD player to erupt with the blare of a trumpet, the croon of a saxophone, and the baritone voice of Barry White. <laughs> the nuns bumped again, and now Rosie couldn't help laughing. She lifted her arms, her giggles full and hearty, and she began to twirl. The sisters closed the circle around her, moving as one great cloud and leaving the nun's daughter in the hall behind them. Now was her chance, grateful for the dark heart habit she wore, the nun's daughter slipped beneath the darkness behind her and moved down the hallway. She passed the door, closed with lights peeking out below it. The hallway narrowed and darkened beyond this point. 
Her arms shivered with goosebumps at the thought of what these wild nuns might keep down dark hallways. <laughs> the nun's daughter peered back into the room where the others were gathered. <coughs> Barry White's voice was still calling for love in the air, and Rosie was doing her best to answer the call, rocking back and forth from her perch on a seated nun's knees while wearing the gleeful grin of a child sitting atop a coin-operated pony. She was giving a nun a lap dance, and it was the most awkward thing the nun's daughter had seen since, well, since Rosie had talked their way into this place. R the nun's daughter couldn't imagine walking back into that room, giving up on her goal while Rosie was so set to deliver on her part, so she looked again at the closed door, lit like gold shimmered from its other side, and pushed the knob to silently open it. She glanced once more at Rosie and the nuns. An older, dark-haired nun didn't seem to be focused on Rosie like the others. Was she looking back at her? The nun's daughter couldn't be sure. She stepped into the room and closed the door behind her. Inside the narrow room, she listened again for breath, sure she felt life in the air. All she could see were wooden shelves carrying books and photo albums, but she couldn't reason see any reason why these rowdy nuns would keep nothing but books and photos behind a closed door. She crept around the shelves and braced herself before every corner, half expecting to run into a drug dealer or maybe a cult leader, but this time there was no breath but her own. She was alone. She went straight for the photo albums, of course, sinking down into a red cushioned love seat and opening an album with black and white photos inside. Each yellowing page was the same. Nuns lied up in two rows on the front lawn of the convent, their faces set in expressionless poses, so identical a sculptor could have carved them from the same stone. The nun's daughter paused when she found a picture with variation, a serious, proud cat at the nun's feet. The door's knob o opened. Somebody had come for her. There were only two possibilities. One, that Rosie's dancing had left the nun so stunned that Rosie had managed to sneak away and join her, or two, that one of the sisters had caught her there. The, the door opened with a creak this time. The habit moving into the room was real, not stitched from cheap sheets. The nun walked steadily, her aging body hovering low to the ground. She smiled when she looked up and saw the nun's daughter, frozen in place with a picture album in her hands. It's all right, child, the woman said. You're free to look around. I'm Sister Evelyn. What's your name? The nun's daughter almost blurted her real name before remembering the role she was playing. She needed a stripper name. She glanced down at the photo before her. They call me Kitty, she said. <laughs> She'd never understood the connection between women's body parts and felines, but at the moment she was grateful for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Evelyn smiled, but the stripper name wouldn't come to her lips. It's lovely to meet you, child, was all she said. Kitty nodded toward the sound of giggling from the front room. Sister, isn't, isn't that sinful, what's going on out there? That, the old woman chuckled, that's no sin. The way I see it, that's nothing more than a poor choice of a career. Kitty shook her head. She hadn't spent much time with nuns, but she did have certain expectations, and Sister Evelyn was defying each one. I guess you've seen many strippers in your day, then, Kitty asked. She knew her main objective was to find her mother, but she couldn't help probing more into this place where her mother had once been. Sister Evelyn didn't answer. She tried to cover her mischievous smile with her hand, but Kitty spotted the curve of the old woman's lips when Sister Evelyn reached over for one of the photo albums with the thick red cover. Those photos are from the er our earlier days, the ones you've got, she said, sitting down beside Kitty and dusting off the album's cover with her plump hands before opening it. These are closer to who we are now. This one's about 27 years old now. The first photograph in the album was just like the others, two rows of proper postured nuns facing the camera with the even stares. Sister Evelyn turned the pages, and each picture after the first showed the nuns in action, hacking up their habits up to their knees as they climbed up trees, or strutting down the backyard runway dressed in drag as priests and pimps. <laughs> one photo showed the sisters crowded around a tall cake as one of them emerged from the top, and in the next, the camera's lens was partly covered, caught in the food fight that followed. <laughs> I didn't understand, Kitty said, as Sister Evelyn pulled another red album down and opened it. What don't you understand, child? You seem just like a regular convent. You're, you're called the Holy Order of something and all, but you sure don't seem holy. And, and what just what makes you think we're not holy? Kitty might have pointed to the living room scene, but just then the music cut to silence. The silence lasted only seconds before the nuns could be heard calling for more, followed by Rosie's voice above all the other sounds. Ladies, Rosie said, her voice high with excitement. There's enough of me to keep this party going. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I can see where you might get the idea that we're not so holy, she said. Here, let me show you something. Sister Evelyn opened the other album, which seemed to pick up where the last one left off, with shenanigans. 
In each photo, from the mud wrestling ones to the hula hooping ones, <laughs> Sister Evelyn pointed out a woman who seemed to be the ringleader of it all. On each page, Kitty's eyes followed the old woman's finger until it reached her, the one with brown skin whose long dark hair was never concealed beneath the headpiece. Sister Claudia, Sister Evelyn said in a soft voice, she's the reason you've come here, isn't she, my child? Kitty pulled away from Sister Evelyn in the photo album and then knew exactly who she was. How did you know, Kitty said. You girls are no strippers, even an old nun can see that, Sister Evelyn said. And I'd know that look on your face anywhere, even after 25 years. It's that look that Sister Claudia had whenever she had a scheme in mind. Kitty folded her arms and stood, feeling suddenly defensive around this woman who'd gazed into her eyes and claimed to know where she came from. Is it anything like the look she had on her face when you kicked her out, she asked the nun without looking at her. Sister Evelyn sighed. You know, my child, you were right when you said we appear to be just like any ordinary convent. The church would think that we are. We've built our sisterhood here for a long time now, and we'd do anything to make the church continue to believe that we were. Now Kitty turned back to the old woman, thinking of the dark hallway beyond the door. Just, just how deep did their secrets run? <laughs> Sister, are you trying to tell me you're going to have to kill me now that I know what's going on here? <laughs> Sister Evelyn's hand clutched her belly as she laughed. No, my child, nothing like that, she said. Just that you'll have to help keep our secret. That's, that's what your mother did when she left us. Here she is soon before she left, not long before you came. The black and white photo showed Sister Claudia, round in a shimmering gown, one hand on the cross she wore around her neck. Kitty, only because she knew what she was looking for, could see that her other hand was cradling her belly, swelling beneath the cloth. We didn't kick her out, Sister Evelyn said. Your mother knew what her pregnancy would mean for the rest of us, so she left, for the good of the convent that all of us could stay. Sister Evelyn and the nun's daughter stared in silence at the photograph for a long while. We heard about the accident when it happened, Sister Evelyn said finally, her voice barely louder than a whisper. Kitty shrugged. The last thing she needed for, was for this woman to start pouring pity on her for never knowing the wild nun who was her mother. I was four year old, years old, she said. I hardly remember anything. I don't need your sympathy. Ah, well then maybe it's just me who needs a little of yours. Kitty turned to see Sister Evelyn's dark eyes flooded with tears. Her lips were still smiling, though. The old woman reached out a hand, and Kitty took it in hers. I was very fond of your mother, Sister Evelyn said. All of us were. When she got here, we were just a bunch of solemn, sad old women. We resisted her gift of laughter to our lives at first, but eventually she changed us all. By the time she left, we'd risen to life. I wanted to find you right after the accident. I wanted to take you in like she took care of us. But we heard your father was taking care of you. Figured that was best. I always knew I'd find you again. I never imagined like this, <laughs> but I thought you'd be your mother's daughter, and I knew it'd be no ordinary meeting. Then Sister Evelyn moved with the calm urgency of her mind struck with an idea. She put a soft kiss on Kitty's hand and then moved to a storage chest in the corner of the room. Would you like to see what she treasured most while she was here? She left it behind for us, and I understood why. After all, she was preparing for a gift she treasured much more than anything else. It seemed as though Sister Avalon pulled the light from the gray chest and onto Kitty's lap. It was the shimmering gown that Sister Claudia wore in her last photo at the convent. Jade green with round cream beads, fabric cut like a nun's habit, but with color that would stand out in the convent like lightning against the black sky. Under Evelyn's guide, the gown glided across the nun's daughter's legs until she pulled it to her chest and buried her face into its center. Once more, the nun's daughter listened for breath. She knew the air pulsing through the gown was from her own lungs, but she felt that she'd found her mother's breath at last, her hands holding what her mother had held before her. Sister Evelyn was standing behind her. What did your mother name you, child, she said. Jade, the nun's daughter said. My name is Jade. Jade, Rosie's voice echoed as she burst into the room breathless and dressed only in a bright blue bra and panties. <laughs> Jade, you've got to get out of here with me, she said with a grin. I've just learned that if you have never taken your clothes off while dancing to Shaka Khan in the company of nuns, then you have not lived at all. Rosie <laughs> <laughs> stopped, her eyes sweeping the scene before her. The teary-eyed nun, her friend buried in a green gown, and then she looked at herself, suddenly red-faced at the sight of her nearly naked body in the home of nuns. Did you... Did you find out about your mother, she remembered to ask? Yeah, Jade said. I found something to share. Thanks.